Uh, this is, was inspired um, at the Chapel of St. Bernadette of Lourdes in 1858. This uh, a chapel was built because of the vision of, of uh, Mary at Lourdes. Um, so, and, uh, and also because so much of the focus of this workshop will be on um, healing, on uh, miracles, on the intervention of, from one dimension of the sacred into our lives. What is that about? What is that? So with that in mind, this is that prayer. I want you to imagine um, heaven looking upon you and there's nothing else around you. There is no technical world. There is nothing, just silence, just you and silence and a prayer. Lay your hands gently upon me. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. You were sent to free the brokenhearted. You were sent to give sight to the blind. You desire to heal all illness, mine included. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. Lord, we come to you through one another. We come to you in all our need. We come to you seeking wholeness. Lay your hands upon me, gently lay your hands. Amen. Okay. Now I wanted to introduce a couple of people, believe it or not, that sounds very funny, but I do. I want a couple of people, you to know that there are two people in this audience. Our, we rebuilt our website and I think it's particularly beautiful. And um, you ought to know, the person is here who did that. He's a genius, he's talented, and he's part of our CMED family. Jim Eaton, where are you? Would you stand up? You should get credit for your genius. Thank you. And, and, I, and, and especially since people thank me for it. And <laughs> If they only knew. I even had to borrow the plug to plug in my phone this morning. So that goes to show you how, you know, but I don't mind being thanked for it as if I did, you know, but no, we have that. And uh, Stacy Couch is here. And Stacy, uh, where are you seated, Stacy? Stacy. Stacy is um, a long time um, participant in Sacred Contracts. She's been trained beautifully to know the certification program and, and reading archetypes, and she's really superb. So if any of you have any interest in that area of CMED, which is now almost 20 years old. <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> Stacy's there, she can help you as well. Okay, now it's my turn. Um, I would like to begin this morning. I was up very early shuffling notes, reshuffling and reshuffling. And I thought that the best way, the name of my new book is called A Return to Ordinary. And, um, The reason I named it that is because um, one of the crises of our time is that people, we have become a society, if not a global society, that holds the idea of being ordinary in contempt. And one of the great health crises of our time is that we actually have come to believe that the purpose in life is to be extraordinary. That that is actually a life purpose. That somehow or other being noticed 
being unique is a calling, is a purpose. People will say to me, I know I was born for something special. And where did that come from? What kind of nonsense is that? And yet, believing that will drive you insane. And it, what it will do is it will cause the beginning of the genuine path of suffering. Optional suffering. Genuine optional suffering. And it will begin the path of you cursing your life, looking for where am I special? Are they noticing me? I'm not being noticed yet. I know God has something in mind. And it will start a narrative in your head of interpreting everything through the lens of, is this, is this a sign that I'm special? Where's my specialness? Where's my highest potential? I'm not sure this is my highest potential. It will become the seeds through which you destroy every one of your relationships. I'm not being recognized for being special in this relationship. My specialness is not being acknowledged. And so I'll get to that in a moment more deeply. And that's the curse of the inner self which is in fact a curse instead of the blessing that it should have been, but could be, will be, after I kick it in the boot. But I would like, <clears throat> the return to ordinary is about getting back to our fundamental design with all of these choices that have caused us to morph away from the path we should have been on, that we started somehow or other, but the, the search and the choice to be extraordinary, to be extra than ordinary, morphed us. And it took us exactly in the wrong direction. Instead of the search for truth, it became about our personal truth. I need to tell you, I need to speak my truth instead of to tell the truth. A very significant difference. A very significant difference. So I'm, I, I, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I would like to just give the thread of how I arrived at this because it has to do with the way in which we think the way in which we see things and how that way has to kind of get, how it got deconstructed in my own perception of things and how I kind of arrived at the sacredness of the ordinary and the toxicity of the extraordinary. 